Hey guys, this is Christo here and I've spent I think a week now with Touch studying uh, this amazing piece of software and what uh, we can do with it and it's really been promising. Uh, I've had this synesthesia, amazing moments pretty much every day. So I wanted to show you how this is done because I um, thought the basics have been covered very well but by Matthew and the rest of the community which I'm really help, uh, thankful to, it's been amazing. Uh, I think it would be useful to just uh, keep showing interesting setups with touch and uh, just just think about you know the uh, kind of show the what what experiences we've been having and uh, just different ideas because it's it, it really is so different and interesting the way it blends all kinds of media together it's amazing so uh, what you can see here is basically an audio spectrum graph that is running down uh, th these axes of the pin board we over time so the fun thing here is that i wanted to kind of make this uh, temporal pin board that is uh, moving with time you know wave style mostly as an exercise i just wanted to see um, how building something like this is gonna like the the problems that I'm gonna then I'm gonna uh, come across and the new ideas that I'm gonna that I'm gonna get to is kind of more like a practice than anything else. But I think it ended up lo looking interesting and most importantly the ideas that you get for like something uh, bigger and real um, are very very cool. So the fun part is the way it works. So let me see here. I have a um, couple of workspaces defined that I switch between, uh, which is quite convenient. So the idea is that you start with some audio. So now I have simply uh, linked it up to my microphone and you can see my sound, my like my voice is coming through. Like if I do this, you know, get these nice big waves. And then I get the spectrum uh, because you see that the audio itself is quite an quite a bumpy signal like uh, very high frequency it's difficult to make up stuff which is visually very uh, you know useful for a thing like this is uh, exactly so i think i found out the audio spectrum is giving me a better uh, like more more useful result so i got this going uh, which is quite obvious just i've set the length you know to something which is giving me kind of uh, smooth enough results and then um, I, I, I was thinking that if I was to pass this down a pinboard in uh, this kind of a temporal way so that you know it, it fades off with time I would have to do some difficult signal processing to kind of remember the current state and then um, offset it by a specific amount of time and uh, create this a, a bunch of these offset channels that then I would um, line up together so so they go on the pin board but actually it turns out that there's a better way in exactly just following the just the opportunities that touch is giving you uh, to just cross between media so in this project itself i'm crossing you see it's audio in the beginning then it becomes compositing then it becomes 3d um, and that's amazing that you can do that and just uh, the the sheer breadth of options that opens up so uh, what happens here is that instead of uh, doing this in the signal processing uh, world uh, like the one over here i'm going to the compositing world uh, so just because I had decided this, um, as I said, you know, when I was struggling to to kind of figure out the way to do it in a signal uh, processing way, I just remembered the feedback to tutorials that I have seen, and I thought, okay, like this is actually exactly what I need. Like I need something uh, that is trailing this kind of a feedbacky way, and I can move the copy upwards so I get this trail, and then I can maybe. Um, send this back to the signal world so what ends up working is that I have a chop to SOP and I simply get the spectrum of the signal as a single um, line of pixels and I then maximize the uh, basically, cre basically create the frame and I'm putting this line of pixels all the way down there at the base so then using the feedback and the transform afterwards I'm simply shifting the transform a bit up and then 
uh, fading it off with uh, the levels here so turn down the opacity which fades it off over time and the feedback is simply overlaying the same frame uh, over and over but because the, um, there are this is the, there is a transform and the opacity here the frame has changed the, the frame that gets overlaid so uh, it, it, it shifts upwards and it um, fades off a little bit i guess you could you could blur it because you could see here that that you see the lines but i think um, you can't it's not much of a problem so we can try just blurring it to see what happens so <laughs> i guess the whole thing is going to become smoother now let's see <laughs> yeah you see that the peaks and the valleys have become much more much less erratic and much more solid which i th which i guess is good you know, it's it's great to have this amount of uh, control over it if uh, it becomes too noisy and too too <coughs> too high frequency noised up. Yeah, great to have this amount of control. So then, what happens is that it's being sent to the comp, which is putting the feedback and the original signal together, which is creating the this effect, and it's being then fitted into. Um, resolution which is corresponding exactly to the rows and columns I have on the pin board which is very important because then my plan is that I sample each pixel of these guys here for one of the uh, pin boards um, pins so uh, to do that I'm using the top to one chop <laughs> these, these things are funny when you send it so basically I convert the uh, the, the top which is like the comp from the compositing world to chop which is the signal uh, the signal processing world and the way that this works is that for every scan line of the uh, image it, it produces one uh, channel so you have like one signal for every scan line these are all uh, things about just the settings of the nodes which I guess is easy to find on the wiki uh, the wiki is amazing by the way so then um, what I do is shuffle node which is sequencing all the channels together because I know that the way it works with the you can see closely here with the uh, kind of indices of the of the pins is that they are in a sequence this is basically vertex numbers so you know it just goes down down in a sequence so what I want to do is to sequence all of them together and I can use this signal then to this place so okay so I um, I sequence all the channels together you see here the these are 200 channels because of the 200 right now um, elements in the grid but if I change the number to let's say I don't know 50 you see that that this <coughs> is keeping uh, uh, working uh, keeps working correctly just because here in the um, in the fit node I have an expression which is pointing towards the uh, the grid node and is simply giving me the uh, the right number of uh, pixels which is important okay so let's go back here now another cool thing is that i thought it would be too simple if it is only moving with the signal so you can see here that this is the result with just the signal moving i guess i can go here and it is too smooth so um, you get information from the audio but it's not as interesting maybe as it could have been so what i do is that i get um, noise and I use it to displace the the composited image with the feedback and the amount of displacement here displacement weight and the settings of the noise are creating this kind of a more interesting more dynamic more complex panorama and interesting to know to notice that this is not actually just adding the noise on top of the image this is displacing the image with the noise so it's just becoming a bit more interesting of course no when you can tweak settings of the noise all um, as long as you wish you can get some really different and interesting looks um, 
it's being phased with the time, just like normal stuff that you're going to see in the tutorials everywhere. So then, because I need the specified displacement amount, I just multiply the signal with uh, something, like for it here, and then I send it to be merged with the exported chop from the grid. So this is basically the uh, instancing workflow that's being again uh, kind of shown in tutorials and described well in the wiki. So what you do is that you turn the information from the uh, from this grid, basically the objects that you have as, as a, a base for your instances, uh, the distribution geometry into signals. So so uh, yeah, you turn it into a chop with the sop to uh, chop, and then I merge it with the channel that is uh, going to be defining my scale on the Z, basically the height of the pinboard um, pins. So now I have that, ch that, that, that channel over in here too. Uh, and you can see that all of their sample counts are matching just because of all the stuff that we have done so far, carefully. Then, um, yeah, this is the cool thing, you know, that, that this is the this is like the X and the Y indices of all the pins on the pin and we have arranged our channels here just that um, everything matches exactly on the right on the right sample which is on the right pin now in the geometry node which is holding my geo I have simply created here a box and I have scaled it in a way which is which m might look a bit complicated here because of expressions for people who haven't dealt with the expressions but this is really n not more complicated than a over b times c so i'm dividing the length of the grid by the number of the rows and then i multiply by separation which means like just you know make the things extra bigger or smaller and i offset the size on z with the uh, half of the size just because I want the pivot to be at the base of the of the cube so they grow upwards and not just you know from the middle a uh, cool thing here is, is that I have exposed a custom parameter so <coughs> you, you see uh, custom parameters here which you can access with customized component when you right click it and then you can assign just a parameter and uh, then you can drive it from the outside you can connect it to a to a to a, ch to a chop or whatever you wish so i think this is very useful uh something that he, that i was not aware until recently and then the instancing uh, of the geometry basically takes the chop which uh, which has all the channels that we need uh, and using the tx ty and tz for the transforms which are which is basically putting all the cubes on all the uh, uh, points of the grid and then using the scale z for um, scale the channel that we have prepared from the audio and i simply have built some color um, by just combining the channels um, it's not a yeah just something that i have kind of shuffled that i that i just experimented and say so what what kind of co combination uh, is working well um, then all of this goes to a render node, uh, which takes the PBR, the new PBR shader, which is something that I wanted to try uh, new in version 99. A very cool uh, material, uh, very 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 easy to work with, and you can <coughs> you can sorry you can easily get some very nice results uh, shading wise. I did spend like maybe maybe you know half an hour or an hour just tweaking it to find you know interesting looks, but it's quite easy to tweak. Uh, then I have the camera moving on a circle. So just this uh, this here circle is being used as the path sop for the camera, and the position is being animated with an expression just so you can swim, spin spin around. And then I have parented the lights to the camera, just using you know drag and drop the 3D parenting scheme, and I have then offset them with some additional transforms on top of the parenting. So if I go to my node and geo view, you can see here that I have the fill light on the right side and the, uh, sorry, the key light on the right side and the fill light 
uh, a bit on the left and on top just so you know I get some nice uh, or at least decent lighting and I have shadows coming from the field lights from the key lights sorry and I have bumped up the resolution quite a lot because of the very tiny pins that need to be casting shallow so you can see here on the left the shallows are being cast this is creating a nice uh, silhouetted you know like a ni nice volume uh, creates nice volume to the whole thing which is great and the other light is just um, filling up and um, creating the additional uh, illumination then if I go to the shader, you'll see I also decreased the shadow strength over here. But these are just, you know, like visual tweaks that you could uh, tweak for quite a while. And then if I go to the performance dialog, uh, you can see where the time is going. So basically the shadow maps are quite slow. Uh, then obviously the the geometry node is taking some time, but these are 0.7 milliseconds. And uh, the rendering the window takes so like 7 milliseconds, huge. A lot of time is, is spent drawing the touch designer windows, which you when you go to performance mode, uh, they disappear. So you get a higher frame rate. You see like I'm getting about 50, uh, 60 frame rate, frames per second. And this is with a grid which is 200 by 200 um, pins. These are 40,000 blocks that are being colored, displacements being calculated, the signal is being processed, and then you know we go we go like from the signal world to the compositing world to 3D, and then compositing a bit again. And this happens at 60 frames per second. It's amazing. Like I I love it. And just this synesthesia in the way that you can move between all different kinds of media and you know approaches is extremely artistically stimulating so i'll be doing a lot more with this and i'll be posting some videos too so yeah see you soon guys